Deuteronomy chapter 2. Then we turned back and set out toward the wilderness along the road to the Red Sea. As the Lord had directed me, for a long time we made our way around the hill country of Seir. Then the Lord said to me, You have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. Give the people these orders. You are about to pass through the territory of your relatives, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. They will be afraid of you, but be very careful. Do not provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land, not even enough to put your foot on. I have given Esau the hill country of Seir as his own. You are to pay them in silver for the food you eat and the water you drink. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast wilderness. These forty years the Lord your God has been with you, and you have not lacked anything. So we went on past our relatives, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. We turned from Araba road, which comes up from Elath and Ezion Geber, and travelled along the desert road of Moab. Then the Lord said to me, do not harass the Moabites or provoke them to war, for I will not give you any part of their land. I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Imites used to live there, a people strong and numerous and as tall as the Anakites. Like the Anakites, they too were considered Raphites, but the Moabites called them Imites. Horiites used to live in Seir, but the descendants of Esau drove them out. They destroyed the Horites from before them and settled in their place, just as Israel did in the land, and the Lord gave them as their possession. And the Lord said, Now get up and cross the Zared Valley. So we crossed the valley. Thirty-eight years passed from the time we left Kadesh, Barnia until we crossed the Zered Valley. By then, that entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp, as the Lord had sworn to them. The Lord's hand was against them until he had completely eliminated them from the camp. Now, when the last of these fighting men among the people had died, the Lord said to me, Today you are to pass by the region of Moab at Ar. When you come to the Ammonites, do not harass them or provoke them to war, for I will not give you possession of any land belonging to the Ammonites. I have given it as a possession to the descendants of Lot. That too was considered a land of the Rabbites, who used to live there, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumites. They were a people strong and numerous, and as tall as Anakites. The Lord destroyed them from before the Ammonites, who drove them out and settled in their place. The Lord had done the same for the descendants of Esau, who lived in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them. They drove them out and have lived in their place to this day. And as for the Avites, who lived in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaphorites coming out from Kephthor destroyed them and settled in their place. Set out now and cross the Arnon Gorge. See, I have given into your hand Sihon, the Amorite king of Heshbon, and his country begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. This very day I will begin to put the terror and fear of you on all the nations under heaven. They will hear reports of you and will tremble and be in anguish because of you. From the desert of Kedamoth, I send messengers to Sihon, king of Heshbon, offering peace and saying, Let us pass through your country. We will stay on the main road. We will not turn aside to the right or to the left. Sell us food to eat and water to drink, for their price is in silver. Only let us pass through on foot, as the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, and the Moabites who live in Er did for us, until we cross the Jordan into the land the Lord our God is giving us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, refused to let us pass through, for the Lord your God had made his spirit 
stubborn and his heart obstinate in order to give him into your hands as he was now done. The Lord said to me, See, I have begun to deliver Sihon and his country over, over to you. Now begin to conquer and possess his land. When Sihon and all his army came out to meet us in battle at Jahaz, the Lord our God delivered him over to us and we struck him down together with his sons and his whole army. At that time, we took all his towns, completely destroyed them, men, women, and children. We left no survivors, but the livestock and the plunder from the towns we had captured, we carried off to ourselves. From Eror, on the rim of Arnon Gorge, and from the town in the gorge, even as far as Gilead, not one town was too strong for us. The Lord our God gave us all of them. But in accordance with the command of the Lord our God, you did not encroach on any of the land of Ammonites, neither the land along the coast of Jabok, nor that around the towns in the hills. Deuteronomy 3 Next, we turned and went up along the road toward Bashan, and the Og, king of Bashan, with his whole army, marched out to meet us in battle at Edrie. The Lord said to me, Do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to Sihon, king of Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. So the Lord our God also gave into our hands Og, king of Bashan, and all his army. We struck them down, leaving no survivors. At that time, we took all his cities. There was not one of the sixty cities that we did not take from them, the whole region of Argob Og's, Og's kingdom in Bashan. All these cities were fortified with high walls and with gates and bars, and there were also a great many unwalled villages. We completely destroyed them, as we had done with Sihon, king of Heshbon, destroying every city men, women, and children, but all the livestock and the plunder from the cities we carried off for ourselves. So at that time we took from these two kings of the Amorites the territory east of Jordan, from the Aaron around Gorge, as far as Mount Hermon. Hermon is called Sirion by the Sidonites, and the Amorites call it Senir. We took all the towns on the plateau and all Gilead, and all Bashan, as far as Saleka and Edre, towns of Og's kingdom in Bashan. Og, king of Bashan, was the last of the Rapites. His bed was decorated with iron, and was more than nine cubits long and four cubits wide. It is still in Rabbi of the Ammonites. Of the land that we took over at that time, I gave the Rebunites and Gedites the, the territory north of Aror by the Arnon Gorge, including half the hill country of Gilead, together with its towns. The rest of the Gilead and all and also all of Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to the half tribe of Manasseh. The whole region of Argob in Bashan used to be known as the land of the Raphites, Jer, a descendant of Manasseh took the whole region of Argob as far as border of the Gesherites and Makathites. It was named after them, so that to this day Bashan is called Hawot Jer. And I gave Gilead to Makir. But to the Reubenites and the Gadites, I gave the territory extending from Gilead down to Arnon Gorge, the middle of the gorge being the border. And out of the Jabok River, which is the border of the Ammonites, its western border was the Jordan in Arabah, from Kinneret to the Sea of the Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, below the slopes of Pisah. I commanded you at that time, the Lord your God has given you this land to take possession of it, but all your able-bodied men armed for battle must cross over ahead of the other Israelites. However, your wives, your children, and your livestock, I know you have much livestock, may stay in the towns I have given you, until the Lord gives rest to your fellow Israelites. 
as he has to you. And they too have taken over the land that the Lord your God is giving them across the Jordan. After that, each of you may go back to the possession I've given you. At that time, I commanded Joshua, you have seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to, to these two kings. The Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over there where you are going. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. At that time, I pleaded with the Lord, Sovereign Lord, you have begun to show to your servant your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? Let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country and Lebanon. But because of you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. That is enough, the Lord said. Do not speak to me any more about this matter. Go up to the top of Pisak and look west and north and south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes, since you are not going to cross the Jordan. But commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. So he stayed in the valley near Beth Peor. Deuteronomy 4 Now, Israel Hear the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord, your God, that I give you. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Pal Pior. The Lord your God destroyed them from among you and everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. But all of you who held fast to the Lord your God are still alive today. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these degrees and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us, whenever we pray to him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous degrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, when he said to me, Assemble the people before me to hear my words, so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children. You came near and stood at the foot of mountain, while it blazed with fire to be very heavens, with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to follow, and then wrote them on two stone tablets. And the Lord directed me at that time to teach you degrees and laws you are to follow in the land that you are crossing, the Jordan, to possess. You saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or a woman, or like an animal or earth or any bird that flies in the air, or like any creature that moves along the ground or any fish in the waters below. And when you look up into the sky and see the sun, the moon and the stars, 
all the heavenly array. Do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshipping things. The Lord your God had apportioned to all the nations under heaven. But as for you, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace out of Egypt to be the people of his inheritance as you now are. The Lord was angry with me because of you, and he solemnly swore that I would not cross the Jordan and enter the good land the Lord your God is giving you as your inheritance. I will die in this land. I will not cross the Jordan, but you are about to cross over and take possession of that good land. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything that the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. After you have had children and grandchildren, you have lived in the land of a long time. If you have become corrupt and make any kind of idol, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God and arousing his anger, I call the heavens and earth as witnesses against you this day, and you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long, but will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. There you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him in if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, and then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. I ask now about the former days, long before your time, from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs, by wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm or by great and awesome deeds like things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides him, there is no other. From heaven, he made you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth, he showed you his great fire and you heard his words from out of the fire because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them. He brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you and to bring you into their land to give it to you for your inheritance as it is today. Acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven and above and on the earth below. There is no other. Keep his decrees and commands which I am giving you today so that it may go well with you and your children and after you and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. Then Moses set aside three cities east of the Jordan, to which anyone who had killed a person could flee if they had unintentionally killed a neighbor without malice or forethought. They could flee into one of these cities and save their life. The cities were these, Bazar in the wilderness, Plateau for the Reubenites, Ramoth in Gilad, for the Gadites and Golan in Bashan, for the Masonites. This is the law Moses set before the Israelites. These are the stipulations, decrees, and laws Moses gave them when they came out of Egypt and were in the valley near Beth Peor, 
east of Jordan, in the land of Sihon, king of Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon and was defeated by Moses and the Israelites as they came out of Egypt. They took possession of his land and the land of Og, king of Bashan, the two Amorite kings east of Jordan. This land extended from Arod on the rim of Arnon Gorge to Mount Syrian, that is Hermon, and included all the Arabah east of the Jordan as far as the Dead Sea below the slopes of Pisgah.